Welcome back. In the last video, we were talking about the hydrologic cycle. Um, these were the different parts of the hydrologic cycle. Um, there's one thing I want uh, to talk about, and that is um, the most important thing on Earth besides the hydrologic cycle. I guess the most important thing for the hydro hydrologic cycle. What we all know that the hydrologic cycle is important, right? But what makes it go? What gives it the energy to go? Well, it's this thing right here. This is that's my sun. So this is this is the sun. Draw a little happy face. That's the sun. Okay, and then here's the Earth's surface. The sun shoots out rays. It shoots out heat, energy, and it causes water to evaporate. Um, so this water, you have this body of water, let's say that's a lake or something. The sun shoots out its powerful energy and it heats up this body of water and that causes this water to evaporate. So this water is going up. I don't know why it's green, but this water is evaporating. It's going up. And once the water starts evaporating, this moisture uh, starts condensing. And when that happens, when the water starts, or that moisture, that vapor starts condensing, then clouds are formed. Clouds are formed in the atmosphere. Those are my clouds. Um, once those clouds are formed, um, and once uh, the moisture in these clouds uh, reaches some certain limit or some certain point, then the water gets too heavy to be held by these clouds. And what happens next? Then, since water is heavy, it falls to the Earth's atmosphere, usually in the form of rain, and that creates more bodies of water. Okay, but rain isn't the only form of precipitation. There are others. Um, rain is the most common, but then there's also precipitation can occur in forms of fog, hail, uh, snow, uh, mist dew, uh, and many, many other forms, right? But rain is the most common. Um, so I guess the key fact here, or the key point here, is that this happy sun uh, is the source of energy for this hydrologic cycle, for this hydrologic cycle to happen to occur, right? And since we're on the topic of precipitation, precipitation is actually a measure of all these other things in the hydrologic cycle. It's evaporation, uh, plus uh, transpiration, plus infiltration, plus runoff, plus storage, plus all this other stuff. So that, that's precipitation. All right. And there's actually a couple, there's actually two more points I want to make uh, before we move on with the rest of the course is that um, point number one. When we study hydrology, we need to make sure we know something about area, right? Area is a two-dimensional parameter, and we can, well, the most common areas that you should remember um, when you're studying hydrology is uh, one acre and one mile squared, or square mile and one acre. So. How many feet are in an acre? Mm, question, question. Well, there are 43,560 feet squared um, in one acre. Okay, so this is an important conversion factor you may need. Um, in a mile squared, how many acres are there? There are 640 acres. Uh, that's the second conversion factor we need to know. Uh, I really don't know how you should remember this, figure out your own tricks, but please, please remember this. Uh, one that I was thought, taught was, um, well, for one mile squared, I always knew there were 64 or 640 acres in one mile squared, but for one acre, when I needed to figure out how many feet squared there were, um, this is the trick I learned in class. Uh, let's divide this, let's put a comma there, right, 43,560, the first two numbers are seven. The last, right, you add the four and the three, you get seven. And then you have, after the comma, it's five, six, zero. Well, five plus six plus zero 
is 11. Hey, 7-Eleven. You, well, anybody living in the United States might recognize this. 7-Eleven. <laughs> convenient store and convenient for remembering how many feet squared are in an acre. All right, so that's point one. Point two is volume. When we talk about volume in hydrology, um, precipitation, when we measure precip precipitation, um, is usually measured in inches, inches or millimeters, right? But it's referred to as a volume. So when we say there was two inches of rain that fell, it's two inches of rain over a whole area. So let's say this was the city of uh, Simi. This is Simi City. All right. All right, this city has a certain boundary. Therefore, it has a certain area, and let's say it was it was uh, there was a storm over Simi City, and there were two inches of rainfall. Well, if you take two inches, which is a depth, and you multiply it by the area, you get volume. So when we talk about volume and precipitation, it's usually measured in inches, but uh, we refer to it um, in volume, right? And let's see what else. Actually, I think that was it. All right, I'll see you in the next couple videos.